homostasis is the regulation and maintain maintenance of an internal environment. This could be from the whole human body or a single cell. A single cell uh, living in fresh water because of um, osmosis has water pouring into it all the time. And like an overinflated balloon, if it was not able to maintain its balance, it would very quickly swell up and burst. Uh, but because of homostasis, it's, it is able to maintain a balance of water in and water pumped back out. So homostasis is this balance of many things. It could be, uh, as we will see in a second, uh, cold. You get cold, um, you don't decide to shiver, you start to shiver. It's a feedback mechanism that allows you to try to maintain a balance in temperature or a balance in blood sugar with insulin or a balance of many, many, many things. Your body is, life is chemical reactions and they're all needed to be kept in balance. If we need a little bit more of something, the chemical reaction of the system swings one way. And once we get back to that spot and maybe tip over that edge a little bit, there's other mechanisms that will swing it back to normal. So homostasis is like a balance of all of life's processes uh, to keep the, the cell or the body living at the highest level. Conditions in the body must maintain uh, be maintained in a very narrow range uh, for optimum life. Uh, temperature is a good one. Uh, lower level animals like fish and frogs um, in the early morning when it's cold they're, they're sluggish. They can't maintain their body temperature in a good range for them. They may see a predator coming and be kind of so slow and sluggish that uh, they just can't get out of the way and they become food. Um, warm but endothermic animals like ourselves uh, we must maintain a temperature in a very narrow range for optimum use for our chemical reactions of life to work in its at their optimum levels. Homostasis keeps maintaining this internal uh, environment within a set range. If you're cold, you might shiver. You might, you know, be prompted to put on more clothes. But even if you can't do that, you might shiver. Shivering is a natural muscle movement that allows us to uh, make some heat. If you're overheated, if it's a summer day and you're out for a run, the homostasis will start to cause us to sweat, which the evaporation of that sweat on our skin, evaporation is a heat stealing process. So heat is taken away from us and we cool down. So another example of homostasis here is shivering or sweating at the, at the human body level. Control systems help maintain homostasis. Sensors gather data are we, you know, what's our skin temperature, what's our uh, blood sugar level, whatever. Uh, control center, brain, other mechanisms receive this message uh, and then this data and then sends out messages in response and the communication uh, system delivers that message to target organs and tissues. It might be um, a release of adrenaline in that uh, something's happened, uh, there's a tragic event has happened and you need to respond to it physically. The targets then respond to the change. Your um, um, sweat starts to come out if you're overheating. Shivering starts to occur if you're uh, if you're too cold. You tend to huddle up and try to conserve core heat. So you know we have sweat glands and sweat um, follicle muscles, goosebumps. These are kinds of things that can uh, change in response to our environment and our need to maintain a set homostasis, or in this case, temperature. Negative feedback loops are necessary for homostasis too. Otherwise, well, once we start sweat, what's sweating, what's going to stop it? We need a negative feedback loop to say, okay, we're done, shut her down. Uh, feedback compares in current conditions to set ranges. So again, your temperature. Are you between, you know, 98.6 and, and uh, say 100? That's okay start to get a little below that, you start to shiver. Get a little bit above that, you start to sweat. And negative feedback counteracts the change. You don't want to sweat too much, you don't want to shiver too much. So if you hold your breath, um, um, your uh, carbon uh, CO2 levels rise. If that rises, uh, control systems forces an, S an exhale and an inhale and then your 
CO2 oxygen levels return to normal. That's why it's, uh, if you like, unfortunately would be underwater and drowning, you hold your breath, but at some point you just have to breathe. And at that point, you know, water gets in your lungs and that makes it even worse, but you can't not breathe uh, at a certain level. That's a, a good example of a mechanism of a feedback and negative feedback to keep, uh, keep yourself breathing. In case that would happen in your sleep or something, it would force you to keep breathing. Positive feedback increases change. A torn vessel stimulates the re release of clotting factors. And you've got a normal situation. And then um, somehow there's a, there's a tear or something in a vein. Clotting factors are released, they're increased, and uh, the clot occurs. And then at a, at a certain point when it's not needed anymore, a negative feedback will shut the clotting process down. That's the basis of homostasis. Swings in many, many different things. The millions and millions of chemical reactions that occur in our body to keep us alive and events like clotting and breathing and shivering and sweating. Growth hormones at the proper time will stimulate cell division. 